Welcome to Science on Two Wheels. In this episode, we'll be talking about the three main ways that thermal energy, or heat, transfers from one object or substance to another. In another video, I explain the differences between thermal energy and temperature. If you're not sure what those differences are, now would be a good time to check out that video. So let's get going. Alright, so heat is transferring all the time. Thermal energy is constantly going from one place or substance to another. So the three main ways in which thermal energy transfers are called convection, conduction, and radiation. And you're probably experiencing all three types of those thermal energy transfer right now, whether you know it or not. The first one that we're gonna talk about today is conduction. Conduction is when thermal energy transfers from one particle to another in an object or substance. It can happen in solids, it can happen in liquids, it can happen in gases, it can even happen in two totally different objects or substances that are touching. There are several really obvious ways that you can experience conduction. So let's talk about how conduction actually works. We know that all particles have thermal energy. We know that all particles are constantly moving and the way that conduction works in traveling from particle to particle is that those particles are simply bumping into each other and then causing other ones to move as well. You've probably experienced a similar version of this, whether it was in a crowded hallway, on a crowded you know, sidewalk in maybe a big city, anywhere that you've been trying to travel and someone else bumped into you and that caused you to move too, that's kind of what's happening with these particles in conduction. They're just moving around, they bump into one another, and that causes them to move as well. And then they bump into the next particle and the next particle and so on. An even simpler example is the domino effect. Particles are very close together. If you take dominoes and put them very close together and then move one, it causes the others to move as well as the first one bumps into the second, the second bumps into the third, and so on. It causes all the others to move. This is very similar to how conduction works. Here's another example we all know, cooking. With conduction, Again, things have to be touching or it has to be traveling through an object or substance. Here we have the burner on the stove and it is touching the skillet, right? And then that heat transfers from the stove top to the skillet. Then the heat travels from the skillet into the egg. And it's doing that from particle to particle. The particles on the stove top are touching the particles in the skillet and transferring that heat then the particles in the skillet are touching the particles of the egg and transferring that heat into the egg. It's fascinating and delicious. One example that I can use for my motorcycle right now for conduction is the hot exhaust pipe. If I were to touch that with my hand, it would burn me. And that is because it would be transferring that thermal energy by touch from the particles of the exhaust pipe into the particles of my hand thus burning me. So just a quick recap of conduction. It is when thermal energy is transferring from one particle to another and that means that it has to travel through matter, right? So either it's one object or substance or it's two different ones that are in contact. Next is convection and convection is something that you experience all the time as well. And in convection, it can only happen in fluids. That means liquids or gases, and it is when the warmer portions of a fluid rise and the cooler portions of a fluid sink. Some really obvious examples of convection are things like boiling water or even just, you know, food in general, any liquid really. When the second story of a house in the summer gets warmer than the first story. One of my favorite examples of convection is the good old fashioned lava lamp. Here's how a lava lamp works. You've got a light bulb down at the bottom. It's an incandescent light bulb, so it gives off lots of heat. In the middle, you've got this fancy jar filled with wax and oil. It's topped off with a bottle cap. And how it works is 
the light bulb down at the bottom will heat up the wax and the oil. As the wax heats up, it will expand. This happens because as the thermal energy from the light bulb, which is being transferred by radiation, by the way, goes into the wax, the wax's particles will end up speeding up, right? They gain kinetic energy. As they do that, they get farther apart and the wax becomes less dense than the oil around it. When things become less dense than, the, than what's around them, they will float. And so that causes the wax to rise as it expands. When the wax gets to the top, it will lose thermal energy. It will cool off because it's farther away from the heat source down here. As it does that, the particles will slow down, right? And it will contract. It will get more dense. Because it's more dense, it will then sink down again. Once it gets to the bottom, it'll heat up again, expand, right? Become less dense, it'll rise, it'll cool off, become more dense, contract, sink, and the cycle just continues. In this way, heat is being transferred from the light bulb upwards through the fluid. So remember, convection must happen in a fluid that's a liquid or a gas, and it occurs when things that are warmer are rising and cooler ones are sinking. All right, so next is radiation. Radiation is actually my favorite because it comes from one of my favorite things, the sun. It's pretty great. Radiation actually travels through electromagnetic waves. That is light. So another, you know, the most common term that we have for that is light. Look at those people having fun down there. Because radiation travels through electromagnetic waves or light, it does not need matter to travel. So right now, for example, radiation light is traveling from the sun millions of miles through space all the way to me now. And it's actually, you know, even warming me up a little bit, right? And it's lighting everything so that we can see. So next time you're outside getting your tan on, just think about this. The energy that you were feeling heating up your skin started out all the way at the sun, millions of miles away. It traveled through light all the way through space, then through the atmosphere, and then into your skin. It's pretty crazy to think about. Radiation travels, though, not only through visible light that we can see, but also through light such as infrared that we cannot see. In fact, your body gives off thermal energy all the time through infrared light. That's how infrared and night vision works. They can actually see the light that your body, the radiation that your body is giving off. So I hope that helps you understand conduction, convection, and radiation. Just a little bit more, remember that convection and conduction both require matter, a medium to travel through, whereas radiation does not. And they all are taking energy from one place and bringing it to another, in this case, thermal energy. All right, so that does it for Science on Two Wheels today. If you like the video, please click on the subscribe button below. Click on that fancy little bell icon so that you get notifications when I come out with new videos and come back and watch some more. Thanks.